Hi, my name is Peter Ledbrook, and in this screencast, I'll be introducing the Spring Security plugin for Grails. To demonstrate its use, I'll be adding access control to a simple Twitter like application called Hubup. I have the associated project open here in Spring Source Tool Suite, and this is going to form the basis of the demonstration. I have the current application running, and if I open it in the browser, you can see that it just displays a list of messages posted by some users. Our task is to add the ability to log in and post new messages. Let's get started by installing the Spring Security plugin. You can do this from the command line, but I'm going to use the Grails prompt provided by STS. Simply type install plugin and then the name of the Spring Security plugin. Once it's finished installing, we're ready to start integrating it into the application. The plugin comes with a simple command to help you get started. It's called s2 quick start and it takes three arguments. The first is the package in which you want to put your domain classes. The second is the name of the user domain class and the third is the name of the role domain class. You would typically use the simple names user and role but Hubbub already has a domain class called user. I could overwrite it, but I'll just use different names for the generated classes in this case. As you can see, the command has created three domain classes for us. SecRole, SecUser, and a linking domain class between the two of them, SecUser, SecRole. It has also created two controllers for us. The next step is to integrate the domain classes into the existing domain model. This is as simple as going to our user domain class and changing it so it now extends sec user, the generated domain class. Note that we have a username property in user, but it's already there in sec user. So we can now get rid of it from our user domain class and the corresponding constraint. Let's now take a look at the bootstrap class where we populate the database with a set of sample users. Since the user domain is now different, we need to update the code. First, I want to create a couple of roles. These will be used for access control, and roles are the standard approach in the Spring Security plugin. The first of them will be a straightforward user role, and the other one will be for administrative users. Remember that Bootstrap can be running against a live database, so there may already be data in there. So I check whether the particular role exists already, and only if it doesn't do I create a new one. Now that the user domain class extends secuser, it has an enabled property. We need to initialize this to true, otherwise the users won't be able to log in. We must also change the stored password values because Spring Security expects the database to contain digests of the passwords rather than the plain text. To get the digest values, we must inject the Spring Security bean into Bootstrap. And then, when we're creating the user instance, we need to use that bean's encode password method. Finally, we link each user to the user role using a static method create on the sec user sec role class. And then that's all we need to do. Our test data is now ready. As yet, the application is not yet protected, but that's easily done with controller annotations. The main Hubbub pages are all handled by the post controller, so that's where we'll go now. Let's look at the actions in turn, starting from the top, follow Ajax. This one, just want to restrict it to people that have the user role. So, secured annotation, we pass it a list with the role underscore user as the only element. Add post Ajax. This is for allowed to allow people to create new posts. 
this we actually want fully authenticated users. So we combine the role user restriction with is authenticated fully. This means that even if a user is remembered, they will have to log in to post a new message. Global should be available to absolutely anybody. That was the original home page that you saw at the beginning. Timeline will show a person's posts or the messages associated with the people they're following. So it just requires the user role. And personal, we're not going to bother with the user role restriction. All we're going to say is the user has to be authenticated or remembered. And it's as easy as that. Several of these actions also require access to the currently logged in user. So how do we go about getting hold of that? Well, first of all, we need to add our Spring Security Service Bean, like so. And then I'm going to add a dedicated method, current user, to retrieve the currently logged in user. The implementation is pretty simple. We use the security service to access the principal. This object has an ID property that corresponds to a user instance ID. We can use that ID to fetch the current user with a simple get. I can now use this method from the controller actions. Let's see how these changes have affected our application. So we start it up. And once it's running, we can look at it in the browser. What you'll notice is that there's not much difference in the actual look of the front page. But if we go to the timeline action, we get a page not found. And that's because it's looking for login slash auth, which hasn't been mapped in URL mappings yet. So let's fix that now. We just need to open our URL mappings class and in there add mappings for the login and logout controllers. If I now refresh the page I get the standard plugin login form. Our actions are now protected but when I log in I get an error. That's because my views depend on a user property that isn't in the model yet. I can easily inject this for all views via Grail's after filter. First I need the security service so I can get information about the current user. Next, I only want to inject the property if the user is logged in. Finally, I use the ID of the principal, i.e. the current user, to get the corresponding user instance, which goes into the model. If I now refresh the browser, my timeline is displayed. The UI still needs some work though. How does a user log in and log out, for example? Let's take a look at the layout for our views, post.gsp. I'm going to add two extra navigation links, one for logging in and one to display the current user's timeline. The login link should only be displayed if no user is logged in, so I use the if not logged in tag for this. The second link should only be visible if the current user has the role underscore user role. So I use the if all granted tag. Note that the roles attribute can be a comma separated list of roles. Hubbub also has a sidebar panel for displaying information about the current user. We need to activate this for logged in users. Notice how the Spring Security tags have a sec prefix.
There's one final thing to do. Add the username and a logout link to the sidebar. This is easily done with a Spring Security tag username and a straightforward link tag to the logout controller's default action. With that done, we can now see the sidebar if we refresh the browser. And we can sign out and we can use the login link to log back in. That's it for this screencast. You can find out more from the plugins user guide, which is accessible from the plugin portal, and from the companion blog post. Next time, I'll be showing you how to handle AJAX requests and custom login forms.